Hi, this is Chris Sorrell, AI Advisory Practice Lead at Catalyte, and today we're going to talk about the intersection of cloud, data, cybersecurity, and AI. So the success of any AI initiative is founded on the three pillars of cloud, data, and cybersecurity. And as we'll see, these form an interrelated web of dependencies and services that support your AI initiative. And so without proper analysis and due consideration of these during implementation, there's a high risk of failure. Cloud is a critical component of AI success. Very few organizations can stand up the compute and storage power needed for training a large language model or other intensive ML tasks. And so we're largely dependent on hyperscalers to provide that capability. Most organizations are already invested in a hyperscaler platform. And so, for example, if you're invested heavily in Microsoft Azure, then it doesn't make sense to go to AWS or IBM for your AI services. But it is important to look at your hyperscaler and understand what capabilities they offer and how that aligns with your capabilities in your tech stack. Do you need to leverage infrastructure primarily, or can you lean on uh, platform services that might provide some capabilities without uh, significant implementation effort? And all of this is going to factor into your costs for uh, implementation as well as uh, ongoing usage costs and maintenance. Data is the foundation of AI, and no AI system can exist without it. But when we talk about data in the context of AI, there's really two major types of data that we're concerned with. The first is the data that we bring to the table, and the second is the data that the AI services bring to the table. So when we consider the data that AI services bring to the table, if you think about like an open AI GPT model, that's been trained on a massive data set, trillions of data points. And this is a blessing and a curse because on the one hand, we don't have to spend the time and effort to train the model. On the other hand, we don't get to control what data is used to train the model. And so it might be introducing inaccuracies or bias or uh, inappropriate language or content, and we don't really have a lot of control over that. So in those cases, we need to understand our use case and the data that AI brings to the table and understand, is it appropriate? And if it's not, what do we do to mitigate that? On the other hand, the data that we bring to the table has different challenges. Uh, everything that we have now is data that's potentially available for AI use. So whether it's content or it's telemetry or analytics data or structured data in transactional systems, um, it, all of it's available, but not all of it is readily consumable by AI. And so we have to look at our use cases and, and consider how do we make it available. And that might mean indexing some content in uh, PDFs into a vector database or um, extracting data out of a transactional system and making it available for querying. Um, it might mean processing some telemetry and running analytics against it. So we need to take a look at the data that we have and understand the questions we want to answer from that data. And then we can determine how do we take that data, process it as needed, and put it into a service that is readily available for consumption by AI. So the intersection of data, cloud, and AI makes the picture more complicated. Not only do we have to think about the type of data we have and how best to position it for AI consumption, we also have to think about the services in our cloud that can support that. So if we need a SQL database or we need a data lake or we need to run analytics against telemetry um, or maybe we have to transform our data and so we need to run some ETL tools like Data Factory or some Python scripts or something like that. All of that requires implementation, has uh, ongoing costs, and to really understand the total cost for implementation and for ongoing uh, usage and support, we need to understand the core services within the cloud that we're going to leverage and um, understand at a baseline how those relate to scale and usage and um, the scope of our use cases. Cybersecurity is a huge topic of conversation when we talk about AI. And of course, anytime there's a failure or a compromise, we hear about it in the news. 
But I think it's important to understand the security profile of your data and your initiatives on a more fundamental level. If you're dealing with PHI data or uh, working with miners or you have data that is in some way valuable for exfiltration, you're going to have a larger security risk. And so the services and systems and processes that you put in place to protect that are going to be commensurately more complicated and costly to implement and maintain. And then when we think about the ways that AI makes this more complicated, uh, the first thing we need to consider is that AI doesn't understand context. It doesn't know that it's right or wrong to use a private email from the CEO to generate the company newsletter. It just knows what data it has access to. And so we need to fall back on the least privileges principle, and that is to say, only provide your AI system with access to data and functionality that it needs to accomplish your business goals. And then we have to think about how malicious actors can use AI in novel ways to uh, exploit systems and, and, and people. And so if we think about AI like a, a chatbot or something, that's it's largely a, a social engineering exploit and a, a savvy hacker could you know, find a way to prompt engineer it to get access to data or functionality that it shouldn't have or put it into an indeterminate state where it could have they could have elevated privileges. And so we need to think about the ways that they could uh, compromise the system and come up with uh, techniques for mitigation. And all of that is going to factor into cost and uh, complexity for implementation, as well as ongoing costs for maintenance and usage. So cybersecurity isn't only applicable to AI. It is a critical component of your data and cloud in any initiative. And so it has to be a first-class citizen of any initiative that you undertake, regardless of whether it includes AI or not. And when we think about AI, it's not enough to say that our AI system is locked down if our data is not secure or if our cloud's not secure. Uh, all of them have to be uh, considered holistically in terms of how they depend on each other and how they potentially expose each other. On the other hand, we can think about the intersection of cloud data and AI as a virtuous cycle. Consider a scenario where we have a monitoring system that's collecting data about logins or prompts or other user interaction, and we're running some analytics and some anomaly detection against that telemetry, uh, and we're using that to identify uh, intrusions and other risks. And we can adopt that type of a reactive feedback mechanism to continually improve the quality of our security and, um, and our systems. And so this type of uh, virtuous cycle is going to ultimately be a critical component of uh, complex AI systems and should be considered really from the beginning. So this is obviously a huge topic and we've barely scratched the surface, but I think it's fair to say that the intersection of cybersecurity, data, cloud, and AI create webs of interdependency which can be both costly and beneficial. And I think it's also fair to say that the success of your AI initiative is going to be commensurate with the effort you have put into these foundational components and understanding the ways in which they interact with each other and affect each other. Okay, so that was a brief conversation about the intersection of cloud, data, cyber, and AI. Again, I'm Chris Sorrell, AI Advisory Practice Lead at Catalyte. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions or comments. I'd love to talk with you further, and have a great day.